Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is January 27, 2022. Welcome to the Plumbing Piping Examining Board. Uh, this is approximately 9-11 a.m. On, um, on this Thursday. Um, this time I would like to ask the uh, board members to review the minutes special meeting on December 15th of 2021 to accept the minutes. Do I get a motion to accept the minutes based on our uh, GF? Motion to accept. I'll second the motion. Great, we have a motion to second. Do we have any discussion further on the um, regulations that was being sent over to the uh, Department of Health? No, uh, with no, all in favor say aye. 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 Deny, abstain, so moved. Okay, thanks guys. Who, who was the yeah. second on that one? I'm sorry, it was Chris and- I second, Jay. Jay. Yeah. Jay, okay. Thank you, sorry about that. Okay, moving right along. Um, does everybody have a complaint status report um, from Jeanette and Pam's division in reference to um, investigations going on? Does everybody have a copy of that in front of them? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, anybody have any questions at all for Jeanette or Pam or this time? I don't, uh, I'll make a motion to accept her report if we have to. Okay, that's a first. <laughs> well, I didn't know if we had to. If not, then don't worry about it. Yeah, no, that's, uh, no, okay, that's. Uh, I do have a question for Janita. Okay. Yes, Mr. Bowman. What, um, this pool company out in the eastern part of the state, do we, are we gonna have any issues with him or you can't um, discuss it at this time? Oh, this is Pamela Brown. This is a open matter that we cannot discuss at this time. Mm -hmm. And it is currently under investigation still and it's with a different unit. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Pam. Um, okay, substitute house bill under a whole business here, uh, an act concerning Department of Consumer Protection, liquor, um, cannabis bill number 6100 includes changes to Connecticut General Statute 393 um, uh, about written contracts. Um, Leslie O'Brien, I believe may uh, attend this meeting to discuss yeah. that. Oh, thanks, Leslie. Uh, could you give the board, um, uh, uh, can you address the sure. board with that information we talked sure. about? Meeting. Yep. Thank you. So, yes, absolutely. So there was a drafting error uh, uh, last year, and the bill that passed, uh, the language that passed, is not it was not everything we intended it to be. Um, the language was supposed to, when there are written contracts, ensure that certain provisions were included in in written contracts, but it was not supposed to require that all contracts are written contracts. Uh, it was also supposed to, uh, with regard to invoicing, uh, when there's an invoice rather than a written contract ahead of time of the work, uh, uh, there was you know the requirement was supposed to be that license the, the workers who do the work on the job their, that their license numbers are on the invoice um, the invoices that was the that was the intent of uh, last year and somehow drafting wise things got mixed up. And so we ended up with language that was not entirely what we were looking for. We have new language, which I, I actually have to forward to the board chairs and will today. Uh, the governor's office didn't approve it until, um, I didn't get approval until Monday morning, uh, and uh, but I did get it. And so now and I wasn't allowed to forward it to anyone until the governor's office approved. So that's why it took me so long, but we have language to fix everything that we are, uh, that's being raised uh, in the general law committee. And I, again, I'll be sending it uh, around to the chairs and they can share with members uh, today. I'll do that. Great, thanks Leslie. Does the, any of the board members have any questions for Leslie O'Brien in reference to this? No. Okay. Leslie, that thanks a lot. I have one other uh, thing. If you sure. want me to, we also in the same bill have, um, there's language in the bill that also allows for 
uh, remote CEs, uh, like was happening before, you know, under executive order, the governor, uh, that, that language uh, will uh, include a provision that the um, that the virtual the remote C CEs have to include, you know, um, interactive uh, classroom so that you know, there does need to be uh, engagement and an instructor involved, even though the remote component will be allowed. That's the language uh, that I will also be forwarding uh, to, uh, to Chairman Appleby today. Um, Leslie, thanks for that, because I was gonna bring that up under the CEU. So um, at, at our MOU meeting the other day, an hour before our meeting, I believe the governor's office had okayed for us to go virtual this session, I believe. Can you, or am I wrong? Um, can you uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong? Um, are we okay to go virtual this this next five, six months before renewals are? I, I, don't, I don't know that that's accurate. I'll, I'll double check. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I, I was, it, that's news to me, but I will. Okay. That was I my would, my wrong interpretation. When where was you based on what what did you think? Why did you think I that? Thought, again? I thought, you know, on on last week's MOU meeting, I just thought wow. that the discussion an hour something came down. I thought from the governor's office an hour before that you had mentioned because um, I know I tried to reach out and then see if there was anything that I needed to know Got going it. in. The so I I'm not sure. Um, I'm sorry. I, I think that maybe may have been a miscommunication. We would. Love for that to happen, but the pro the right right now there seems to be a a desire by the legislature and the governor to allow the legislature to determine sort of next steps when it comes to this um, public health uh, emergency, and and so as a result, um, I, I don't foresee that happening. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. So, that was no, no, no. It, it's fine as long as this is good, so we know going into the into our curriculum because the plumbers start, you know soon here once we start getting our stuff together um and the um and the agency is working to with jason cohen to put together um an online um uh, presence with all the information so i'll be able to access it which i'll be bringing up shortly um great um thanks is there anything else leslie you, 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 i know you're um, busy no that's uh, thank you i i uh, i think that's it. i mean we are also um well uh, as, as you all know, the CE um, language uh, was amended last year to require that CEs be complete three months before renewal. Uh, and so uh, we'll be um, sending out notifications to licensees to inform them of that. And we'll be regular doing sort of like a regular reminder of that. But uh, that is, uh, we're working on a, a, a notification that we will um, uh, uh, hopefully have ready to be sent out uh, to licensees starting next week. Um, so uh, that is that is another update. Um, I, we planned on sharing um, the language that we will send out in an email to all licensees before we send it out. We're planning to share that with Chairman Appleby and Chair, Chairman Valerie's um, so that they can um, review it to make sure, you know, we, we uh, have everything we need in the email. So. Um. Thanks, Leslie. Board members, since our next line item, number two, is an update on the plumbing continuing education. Leslie pretty much told us everything that I was going to discuss. So it's really, you know, the, the, um, the fact that um, classes, uh, when everybody does put together their, um, their new uh, do we have Jason on board? Um, do we have Jason Cohen here uh, at all, no, Karen? No, we don't. Um, okay. Can I just um, just take sure. a second here? I just want to make sure um, with Leslie while we have her, because we're getting a lot of um, a lot of requests and uh, emails and questions about online continuing education, and I just want to make sure right now for the time being. There is no option for that for the foreseeable future, right? I mean, I know it's in the works, but for the purposes of the emails that I'm addressing, um, or the licensees that I'm addressing by email, there just isn't an option, and I should probably, that's what I want to convey. Right. Uh, yes. I mean, and, and by the way, Chairman Appleby, I, I'm a, I apologize if I, I spoke out of tune on the on the CE update uh, piece for your agenda. Sorry about that. Um, 
the uh, the um, you're right. Yes, that's correct, Karen. We're you know I and I thank you for forwarding the you know email some of the emails you're getting on this issue to me. I we do not have the authority to allow for the remote CEs to continue. Uh, okay. you know, we don't have the authority to do that. We would love to, but we don't have the authority to. So we are uh, short of a, another executive order, which is okay. not in the works. We have proposed language for this legislative session. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman last night and I explained this to him. He was very frustrated because he's you know, 68, I think he said, and, you know, he's not going anywhere with, you know, without, um, you know, in a classroom setting like that. So I, I, um, I, we are going to convey to the leadership of the general law committee, the need to move this language very quickly um, so that hopefully we can get this done before the, you know, before the very end of session, the session adjourns this year, May, May 4th is the last day of the legislative session. We're hoping, I mean, the good news is the general law committee's deadlines are uh, uh, among amongst the earliest deadlines uh, for committees. So we're, and we, and the, and the leadership wants to get the, the DCP bills done quickly and first out of the gate, they told us. So uh, we, uh, I've told, if we get, the more inquiries we get, I'm just, I'm gonna let everybody know the process um, who you send to me, Karen. And I gave the gentleman last night the, the contact information, the email addresses of the general law leaders so that it, he could, you know, express, you know, the need to move this quickly to them. Um, so, you know, the, the thing with that may be then if this is, doesn't happen until May and then they have to take it by June 30th. I mean, I know everybody is doing the best they can, but then by the time, you know, everybody gets word, okay, we can do it online, then there may only be a month left for, understand we're, certain, these, we're so. stuck though i mean the problem is yeah, we're no stuck. i know the, the law requires requires the three months right now we can't waive that either and right, <laughs> right, right, to right, right. On that would also require a legislative change that right. that sounds like we're better off just pushing for the um and w which is what our bill does i mean you know we're better mm -hmm. off just pushing to make sure this online piece is allowed and pushing for them to do it quickly and right that's right. the goal so to the you know okay. i i you know to the extent uh, board members here feel strongly about this and want to share that um, concern um, with uh, legislators. You know, that's great, much appreciated. Um, it, and I, I don't have a bill number yet because, uh, you know, again, the, the, the session hasn't started, but they have the language. And in theory, the legislative commissioner's office is drafting it um, or it's been drafted. So I'll have okay. a, I have a, I have a bill number. I'll be happy to share that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Karen, for that, too. I appreciate that. That's uh, especially with all the overwhelming calls and emails you're getting. Um, so um, does any of the board members have any uh, questions about this um, uh, with Leslie while we have her? I do. Melissa has oh, her hand up. Thanks, Melissa. One of, one of my concerns is in looking through the, the documents that Karen sent out is the working group had discussed allowing people from out of state to have licenses here, which we've never done before. So I understand that that's something that's discussed and it's it's not a formally approved yet, but Leslie, that would just be another thing that if that does get approved and we're allowing uh, P2s from Rhode Island, Westchester County and Putnam County to have licenses here in Connecticut, which has never been done before if they don't meet our criteria for um, schooling, I would be concerned that if we don't allow online CEUs, that all of these people from other states won't keep up with their license requirements. So, I, a separate issue. Uh, I get how you're connecting it to the online CEUs. I, I it, you know, when it comes to the out-of-state applications uh, for equivalency, that's what you're talking about. And like, which to make sure I understand, what you're talking about is in the documentation of the agenda. There was a list of potential out-of-state um, licenses that could be, and Richard, you're here somewhere, I hope, uh, that could be um, approved by the working group if they get those applications. Um, and so, right, to your point, if you all sign off on that and there's no online CE component, then your concern is that they wouldn't keep up with the CEs because they wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't have the access or the ability to come into Connecticut to do the in-person. That's, that's correct. 
So, you know, what I would say to that is, is we are, you know, at the very latest, and in 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 we really want this to be a lot earlier, at the very latest, the requirement, uh, the online, hopefully requirement, uh, uh, allow, allowing online would happen at the very latest, you know, at the, at, in, at the very beginning of May. Uh, we would hope for, for it to happen much sooner than that. Um, I can't give you more information that, than that at this point because I can't guarantee anything. So as you're all deciding what to do, I appreciate the concern there 100%. But, um, but yeah, we, uh, and I'll let Richard take over, but I, you know, we're, we're you know, we really want to get this online piece done quickly. And, uh, but it is a sort of separate issue from this other issue, even though I get why there's a concern. Thanks. Richard, I don't know. Do you have anything you want yeah. to add? Uh, no, it, but that's, this has been a problem for years with out-of-state licensees being able to take continue education. And some of the schools did find locations out of state, or we had some, uh, in maybe electrical type, we had some pro providers of education that were, in fact, out of state. So, uh, no, I mean, this would be good if we get the online back. It will clear up that there will be no excuses for out-of-state licensees not to take the CE. Right, right. And we've always been protecting our license holders that do all the schooling here and meet the same requirements. And I mean, we could use the same example of the state of Connecticut is working virtually. Um, so you don't want your plumbers to actually be able to have that same advantage. So I'd love to see if you could send out the bill number, I would definitely write to general law. Yep, I absolutely, as soon as I have a bill number, I will absolutely share it. Uh, and and I will be uh, talking again with the leaders of the committee and, uh, you know, flag the, you know, I've said it before, but I'll, I'll reinforce based on this meeting and the feedback I've been getting um, from, you know, from, from licensees about not being able to do this online anymore. I'll, I'll, so I'll, you know, I'll reiterate to the, the, the committee leadership too, but I will send you that bill number as soon as I have it. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, uh, Melissa. Um, as far as continuing update, um, is Jason um, attending today, Karen, to discuss the uh, participants as far as the um, um, going forward, uh, how he is going to um, possibly put together that class for the um, uh, for the facilitators um, to teach them how to um, go online and, and actually put in all their information versus the binder. So that way we can, um, I can see that on a daily basis to see um, the, the, the whole program and see what is missing out of the, I believe there's what, 11 or 12 uh, pieces. Um, just to share with the board, yesterday I met with uh, Karen and, and Jason Cohen. He's an IT specialist with the department. And he uh, put together a online so uh, uh, the schools can go online instead of putting a binder like their fire marshal uh, uh, requirements, their insurance certificates, all those things can be now put on online very simply added to uh, this. They'll have a confirmation number. Um, I want to call it a like almost like an account number to go on to Connecticut e-license. They'll only have access to a certain area and they'll be able to plug in everything that we need. So that way I don't have to make, you know, 10 trips to, or six trips to Hartford and then go back again to see what changes were made if they, they weren't done. So it's really gonna help me uh, and the boards. Um, Larry will be doing it as well, I believe over at Electrical. Obviously we only have six um, uh, groups that we have to uh, go through training where Larry has over 30 schools over at the electrical board that'll have to go through the same process. So it's just bringing us up to um, snuff. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, and um, there'll be more to follow um, if Jason's not here today, but um, we'll be able to, um, um, but I like the fact that he's offered to at least um, help the uh, do a kind of a, you know, uh, uh, an online presentation of how each school can enter their information into the database. Karen will be eventually providing each school with an ID account number. I believe I'm right, Karen, in saying that. Um, right, right. They will be assigned account numbers. And um, Jason, when this, within 
um, the next two weeks, this will be um, all set to go and Jason will be providing um, instructions and an online and a, a training session on Zoom or on Teams to let the providers know how to um, go about submitting their online education um, provider package this way. But it is it is um, a better way to go. It's up to speed with technology and, and it's a good thing. It's a good change. Karen, and uh, the, to give you credit here, uh, that was really a push by you to get that done. And I really appreciate that because it's really, after yesterday's meeting, it's really gonna make my life easier because at, at the end of the day at four o'clock, whatever providers send in information, I'll be able to sit at my desk at 5 a.m. before I go to work at seven to be able to quickly get back to all the um, schools. You know what I mean? Right. Excuse yeah. me, I have to let the dog out for a second. Yeah. Sorry about that, okay. Um, thanks, Karen. Um, all right, um, Thank uh, thanks. Um, we're on to... Um, the well drilling regulations now, um, Cynthia has been working on, um, and I'm going to give um, Cynthia the floor right now, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Um, so Thanks. good morning, everyone. Um, I think we all know that after, um, I think it was last month's um, special meeting that we had regarding the requested um, revision to the well drilling regs where um, the board, or at least, you know, there was a public comment um, requesting that the authority to issue replacement well permits um, be transferred from the board to local health districts. We went back to um, DPH, as you all know, for their commentary, since this would directly affect um, local health um, directors. And they opposed um, that change, so it did not go through. Uh, their major concern was uh, a lack of uniformity across the board with local health, dis local health districts individually deciding these um, replacement well permits without really there being like an overarching uh, body to control or at least to apply some uniformity to um, their application of those regulations. So um, we put together our notice of decision, uh, the department put together a notice of decision. And that was just posted yesterday by Jerry on the e-regulation system saying that um, that change will not be applied to the regulations at this point. DPH also felt that that should have been, that should go through a statutory change because um, they felt that the department doesn't have the authority to um, transfer that authority from the board to the local health um, districts. So um, we won't be putting in that change. And the next step at this point, according to Jerry, who just told me this last night, um, is to send these to the attorney general's office um, to review for legal sufficiency which basically means, you know, do we have the authority to promulgate these regulations? And clearly we do. Um, that change, or at least that review can take up to 30 days. And then from there, I believe it goes, Leslie can correct me if I'm wrong, she's the expert on these, but it goes to the um, legislation, what is it, the legislative uh, review committee, or yeah, legislative regulation review committee, that's it. Um, and then from there, it keeps on winding its way through the system. So hopefully, um, we're making some progress and these should be done sooner than later. Uh, Cynthia, um, yeah. is Leslie still on board? <coughs> yep, yeah. still here. Yeah, after the 30 days from the AG, it goes over to the Red Committee. Does it then go to the governor for a signature? Does the governor no. need to say no? No, no, no. Cindy's description is, is absolutely accurate. Um, it goes to the legislature. And so once AG is done, it's submitted right away. We, well, Jerry will hit submit quickly to the uh, to LRRC as we the acronym for the Legislative Regulation Review Committee, and they um, that you know it takes like 40, 45 days to get it on their agenda after we submit to them after the AG's review. So it's like forty five days, then and then they and then it's on their agenda for their meeting. They meet at the end of each month. Uh, it, it's the, like the last Tuesday of the month usually or the fourth Tuesday of the month, something like that. I can't something along those lines. So when the so it will end up on their agenda, the the it it's uh, what happens is when it's sent over there, uh, the legislative commissioner's office, uh, and they and that office serves as a nonpartisan a staff uh, attorney office for that committee. They um they then review to make sure uh, everything is you know, um, 
uh, written the way that in the format that they want and you know things of that nature and so they review as well then they make a recommendation to L the LRRC committee members to either reject or accept the proposal then it, then they vote on it at their meeting and once they vote uh, once they vote if they vote yes then we get then we submit it to the secretary of the state's office um, for uh, codification and and once that's posted they're they're effective they're 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 the new regs so um that's the process the rest of the process thanks leslie for that that's great um does that anybody have any questions aaron uh, obviously this was information um for you obviously to get back to the um your well drilling industry in Connecticut. Um, I'm sure your question is going to be, where do we go next with this? Um, how do we go about working with DPH? And um, obviously, they have a lack of uniformity um, with this, um, where we want to go with it. Um, what would be our next step? Do you agree, Aaron? Is that a good question? That, that's one of my questions. Uh, it's funny that they're, they're citing a, a, a lack of uniformity, which is which is the point by allowing sanitarians some uh, discretion because the sanitarians know their areas and not every area of Connecticut is the same. Um, it also is interesting that <clears throat> this is a health code uh, issue. Uh, the setbacks are in the health code, not in consumer protections code. Uh, the, health, the health department allows sanitarians to um, put a septic system on top of a well uh, when they see fit to move a septic system. A uh, perfect example was the, the situation that was created in Woolcott that, uh, that we just, uh, that Chris and I just went up to, to look at. Um, the situation would not have occurred had not uh, local health put the septic uh, 38 feet from the well. Uh, so it's, I think the point was missed. Um, as to why we were proposing that change. It was to allow some discretion. We weren't taking DCP out of the equation altogether. If there was a, a, a question beyond the sanitarian's ability, uh, then it would, would fall back to the plumbing board. Um, so yes, I guess my question is where we go from here. Um, and I, I really think that uh, if, if the sanitarians can't allow us um, uh, discretion, on a well permit uh, to, to, to deviate from the setback uh, for a new well, then they really shouldn't have the ability to encroach on an existing well um, with a new septic under any circumstance. It needs to meet the code then. There has to be some kind of review. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's my question. Yeah. Um, I'll just jump in and, and then um, Cynthia, feel free to jump in after me if I miss anything, but I think really at the heart of the putting this sub, sort of substance and logistics aside for a second, at the heart of DPH's concern is this, what is currently in statute and uh, what, so what we are permitted to do in a regulation based on the statutory framework that exists. And, you know, putting this sort of substance of this aside for a second, it's, there's the process as well. And the concern is that this this proposed language we submitted to them would be in conflict with the statute the statutes so, so a regulation can't um you know preempt a statute a statute can preempt a regulation but you can't but it but not the other way and so the their real con, you know they think this needs to be ironed out in statute not regulation first and that's the issue whether or not they agree or disagree with the substance is frankly, less of, a, of an issue right now. And it's more about how, the logistics of how you do it. And, and they think it needs okay. to be, the statutes need to be amended. So that's really the issue now. Where do you go from here with regard to that? And the answer is, you know, I think uh, working with, we have to work with DPH to, to, to revise the statutes in a way that everyone can agree. Um, and so, uh, it's probably late to do that for this legislative session since agency proposals were like, you know, due last fall. But we can um, perhaps may, maybe after the session ends in May, pull people together that, you know, 
you all work with over on the DPH side. And uh, I, Cynthia, an attorney over there and um, in their legislative, my counterpart over there does legislative work. We can all work together to try to come up with some language for the following session. Okay, that sounds like a plan. We'll try and attack it in that fashion. Cynthia, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, sorry. No, no, I think you've summarized it perfectly. Um, but my one question was, is it, is it DCP's statute that needs to be amended or DPH's or both? Uh, probably both, more on the DPH side, I think, but probably both, but, um, but that's why I think we need to right. hammer it out with them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie, for that. That was great. Um, okay, um, anybody else have any questions in reference to the um, well drilling regulation? So it sounds like um, Attorney uh, Padula, uh, Jerry Padula, is going to um, uh, continue to bring these um, regulations, the geo regulations that we've been working on for 13 years um, to the forefront. Right, exactly. Jerry's on the next steps. Exactly. Okay. Are you okay with that, Aaron? Uh, yes, yes. I'd love to, love to see it come to fruition. Okay, that's a, that's a yes. Okay, I'll take that a as long a yes. time. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Cynthia, for that, and Aaron too. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll we'll pursue this uh, uh, after the session ends and see if we can uh, put together a subcommittee for that um, and, and and meet. Um, okay, uh, under new business. Um, Backflow prevention devices, discussion regarding licensure for the backflow prevention device. We have a hand up. Uh, I believe there was a hand up. You put it back down again. I put my hand down. I'm sorry, it was <laughs> hanging there. <laughs> okay. Had a floating hand. Okay, is there any discussion today in reference to a backflow prevention device? Question is, was it registration? for the device itself? Is that what I'm reading? Um, it's discussion, just the licensure for it, which I believe is um, this training that's done through the Department of Health for it, I know that. Um, obviously the plumbers do the backflow prevention device installations. Um, it's in our, it's in our um, Prevy. Um, seeing nobody here has any reference to that. What 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 are, what are they, I, I guess I'm lost, Chuck. What are we looking? What's the new business about with the backflow prevention? What is it? What discussion regarding licensure for backflow? Isn't there, isn't there a isn't there a backflow prevention license now? Um, let me let me chime in here for a minute. I don't know why it's on the agenda completely. Maybe Karen can add to that. But what I can tell you is that a while, quite a while back the Fire Protection Sprinkler Board wanted to make an argument that the sprinkler fitters can install a backflow prevention device. And I told them, no, that they don't have the statutory authority, that even the irrigation person under the plumbing board has to have a license P1 install a backflow prevention device. Then the irrigation person can tap off of it. I said, sprinkler fitters are no different. The plumber brings in the potable water line, puts in the backflow prevention device, and then the sprinkler fitter can install their riser. So this may be left over from that conversation and the fire protection board um, did contact Chuck and talk about it. Um, Dave Waskowitz, the chairperson, and um, everybody is, is in agreement that unless the statutory change is made in chapter 393 that allows the definition of fire protection sprinkler work to include installation of backflow prevention device that a licensed plumbing contractor has to do it um, currently and, and, and forever right now. So that's the only thing I can think of. Um, I mean, obviously if you have a, if you have a J1 license, um, you do do the backflow prevention device in the bottom of a well for your well pump, but um, this is for a potable water line coming into a building that the plumber has to put the backflow prevention device. Likewise, the heating contractors cannot install a backflow prevention device when they have a boiler feed line. So uh, it's gotta be done by a licensed plumber brings over the potable water to the boiler. And then the uh, 
and then the heating guy can take it from that point. So maybe maybe this comes from the sprinkler board argument. I'm not sure why it's on the agenda unless Karen has more information or a document in regards to it. So basically, uh, Rich, we're, we're, it's going to stay status quo. We're not going to change anything with the backflow preventer. Correct. Correct. Okay. The primary position is they'll have to go and lobby for a statutory change if they want to have it where sprinkler fitters can install a backflow prevention device. But the argument's always been potable water comes under plumbing and piping work. Right. And potable water, for the protection of potable water, a licensed plumber puts in backflow prevention device. Right. And then once that's been installed, there is a credential from the Department of Public Health that allows a person to test a backflow prevention device, but it does not allow them to remove it or replace it to fail. They got to contact a licensed plumber. It's just for a person to test it on a periodic basis because of the public health code, wanting to make sure that it's still sufficient. Okay. Thank you, Richard. That that clears it up for me. Good. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Richard. Does anybody else have any questions in reference to backflow today? Chris did. Uh, go ahead, Aaron. Well, you first, Chris. You were up first. Okay. I guess this has got to do with the sprinkler people are looking for more work to do, or this has been going on for years. But along with your what Richard said, your lawn sprinkler people have been putting them in for years too, testing them and checking them. I don't know about wells because I don't know that much. And I know on the heating, the heating companies, when they change a the boiler, they're putting the 9D backflows on. So they're, 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 it's been going on for years. And I don't think you're going to change it and it should stay as the plumbing. But there's not enough inspectors. There's not, there's not enough people out there to uh, pr pressure the people to do it properly. And you're in a work shortage now. You can't get employees. You, you can't get licensed people, it, what, regardless of the trade. So they're just doing what they're doing and moving on. That's all that I have to say about it. I, I would just like to clarify, and, and Rich, maybe you can make sure I'm understanding correctly. Uh, but we, two different devices, we install check valves in, in, uh, well systems, uh, both in the in the uh, drop pipe string and at the tank, and we also will install backflow preventers or a testable device in certain situations right after the tank, uh, many times to feed uh, an irrigation system. But you have, but you have a J a J a, a plumbing license, the J license. It, it is a J license. I wanted right. to be clear that the J's could put could install a testable device. Uh, I also had Aquarian tell me because I had a J and uh, we they were tying city water into um, houses that we were going to retain the wells. I have had Aquarian tell me it was okay for me to put in the RPZ uh, on their line, which I felt. A little, was a little bit sketchy, but uh, they came and inspected it and said it was fine. I, I think that's beyond our scope, but. Uh, well, it is, it is, because you'd have to have, but you're, you're, you're exempt in so far as the scope of a J1 license, which is anything okay. associated to well, well pumps and mortar condition equipment. So, um, so you know, anyway. A know. lot of those, a lot of times those are, those are, the RPCs are, are, um, they're more than five feet from the water tank on an irrigation line, but um, it's still- yeah, But you're allowed to do that, Aaron. Uh -huh. You're allowed to do that. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else anybody has any questions for? Okay, let's move on to application review working group. Um, as a designated board member, everything went well. We had a few uh, applications. Uh, last month, uh, um, um, uh, Paul Annan uh, chimed in um, uh, with some uh, possible changes that she, uh, or interpretation of what she thought the statute says. So we're continuing to work on that. Um, right now, we've been allowing the Westchester County journey person uh, as a, an equivalence of the P2. 
um, to be allowed to test. Um, and I think the last page shows, um, um, you know, the Rhode Island journey person um, is also allowed to test for the P2 as well in Connecticut. Um, and um, again, they're not, they're, they're allowed to take the P2 test, not skip it, but to take it and, and, and go, you know, like everybody's worried that they'll skip it, go right into the contractor license portion. No, they, they're going for the, the uh, journeyman um, piece because their education and their time in the trade allows them to do so. Buck, I just want to hang on. Chris, you're sharing your screen with everybody. Yeah, I know. I got it screwed okay. up here. I got to okay. go out. Sorry, Jai bye. For life. There we go. Okay. Hey, we, we almost got some gyros for life. I, I just nah, wanted you didn't get nothing. Don't worry about it. You never know. Well, lucky I'm on here. Chris, I just wanted to save you that. It was intriguing Thanks, for a minute. Jay, it wasn't intentional. Wow. It was intriguing. <laughs> want to help you out, my friend. <laughs> want to help you out. Hey, uh, Chucky, my question is, you're allowing the Westchester uh, companies and the Rhode Island companies and the mass companies. Are you allowing the, their masters to take our P1s or are they they're required to go through the P2 program first then? Well, this is where Paul Annan was involved with our last working group meeting. And I'll, I'll let Richard chime in on that if you could, Richard, so you could explain that probably in a better format to me. I'm, I'm sorry, I do, before, I don't know what your question was, but hang on. Do we have to click on another link for Terry Doe to do the hearing thing in seven minutes or eight minutes? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. So anyway, because I just had a pop-up reminder that the meeting is coming up. Um, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Question is, since we're allowed, the working groups allow in Westchester P2 licenses to take Connecticut P2 licenses. Are they allowing the Westchester master contractor to take the Connecticut contractor license? Or they have to go to the right. journeyman so, license first? Yeah, so this is this is a discussion we didn't need to have with Paul at Annan. So, um, and, it, and it's not on your list, I don't think, for the board to approve right now but we probably we need to have a special meeting with paulette Ann and up all the board chairs and then eventually convey this information to the board members about the interpretation of having six years of equivalent experience at least two of those being journey person experience out of state and having a, a contractor's license out of state to be allowed to go straight for a contractor examination. So that's being discussed right now with Paula and 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 uh, I don't know if Chuck talked to Larry or not, Larry Valerie's on the electrical board about setting up a meeting with all the boards um, regarding consideration of journey person experience out of state and to let a person sit for our contractor's exam. You that said two be. years as a journeyman, Richard, and then four years, what's as the an other? Equivalent, as an equivalent apprentice. So it's six years total to apply for an unlimited, unlimited contractor type license. Okay, thank you. And, and the statute does say for six years of equivalent experience for an out-of-state person. It's, it's been in the statute for a long time, but we've always said equivalent means your education, apprenticeship program, you know, journey person time, et cetera. So we, we need to have a special meeting on this. Correct. Correct. Okay. And me and Larry have been talking back and forth in the past week since this has come up, uh, but we have not um, set up, but this is um, something that we'll um, further talk about setting up some sort of a meeting with the chairs. I got one quick question on the subject, Chuck. Sure, Jack. Uh, so I know Rhode Island, Massachusetts, a Connecticut plumber equivalent can go out and take a test in those states and they allow it. Is Westchester, I mean, reciprocity is where one, you know, where your reciprocity is, in, is in an agreement between two parties. Is Westchester and Putnam going to allow Connecticut plumbers to come and test in their area with the equivalency? Or is what, it just what's no, what's been happening right now has nothing to do with the reciprocity language 
in Chapter 393 where both states or both jurisdictions have some type of agreement. We're using the statutory language where it just says, how do you consider equivalent experience and training to let a person sit for an exam? That's what we're doing with these categories that we've looked at already and are on a list of what we feel a credential in another jurisdiction would be equivalent to ours to sit for our exam. So there is a separate section in chapter 393 that addresses reciprocity where you can obtain a license provided the other jurisdiction allows our people to obtain a license in that jurisdiction. But that's not the, that's not a, uh, a section that's even being considered or we don't use that section because we have no agreement. But the rest of the licensing law says you either complete a bona fide apprenticeship program or you must show equivalent experience in training. And that's that's what we're doing here. And that's why we need a meeting with Paul and Anna. Yeah, to discuss, okay. To discuss equivalent experience in training issues to allow a person to sit for an exam, not to discuss the reciprocity um, statutory language. Yeah, I guess right now is not the time to get in depth of a conversation. You're right, a special call meeting for this is appropriate. Yeah, we really need to have this yeah. statutory language, the sec specific sections all put in front of everybody so everybody can read them and, and discuss it. I agree. All right, thank you, Rich. Thank you. Okay, I think that completes our um, meeting today. Uh, we're going to be taking a um, 15 minute. Um, the 20 minute uh, recess between this board meeting and the uh, beginning of the hearings um, due to everybody's scheduling and uh, take a break. Um, so thank you everybody. Um, is there any correspondence, uh, Karen, uh, for this meeting today or comments or concerns? Um, let me just look over here. Um, actually, Jason is here. I'm gonna let him in the meeting. Um, I just had a question though regarding number three that we just talked about about out of state licenses and equivalency. Are okay. we um, what we are looking for is discussion and or a vote by the by the board to say that these licenses are equivalent to Connecticut's um, licenses that they can be approved by the application review working group. Is it safe to say that this would be tabled until I think we need to say it has to be tabled. I'm sorry to jump in here. But yeah, that's the, the, equivalent, the word equivalent is way too vague. Yep. Make a motion at the table until we have a special meeting. I'll second that motion. Second. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 And then aye. let me just, um, I'm going to have Jason join us here. He's got his yep. hand up. Give me a second, Jason. Good morning, Jason. With us. Yes. There he is. Can you hear us, Jason? He's on mute. I can. Thank you. Sorry, I, I didn't know you were anticipating me here. I had a conflicting meeting, and I actually have another meeting that starts in one minute. But I, I saw an email that you're looking for me, so I wanted to pop in quickly, introduce myself, and answer any quick questions if I could. Thanks, Jason. I kind of gave an overview of yesterday. Um, if you uh, want to just uh, quickly, if you want to, I, I told that the uh, we we're going to set up a meeting in the next couple of weeks with the different groups um, um, to, you know, for you to go over and Karen will give them an ID number to get into the license program. If you want to just give them a quick, as we discussed yesterday, I kind of gave it to them already, but um, there are kind of a couple um, people would have that have the um, you know, the facilitators here uh, in our board. So you might want to, you know, if you want to do a brief overview of what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll put together a, a demo, but it, I, it's it's pretty easy, uh, you know, if you've ever worked with the license, I know some of you may have, but uh, it's an online system um, and you'll, you'll go in and, and you'll upload each of the required documents for course providers, uh, you know, I mean, of course, uh, proposals um, and then you know Chuck will be able to easily go in and review and approve each document and if there's any um, document has an issue he can you know mark it as an issue and it'll let the, the provider know that they need to resubmit you know that particular document um, 
And then it'll also uh, integrate with the website. So it'll list all of the approved courses that are available for credential holders to, to go and, and take. Uh, so it'll be a much more streamlined process um, and keep things up to date. And actually, uh, Chuck, I was able to, to finish the system last night. So it's, it's actually ready to go as soon as we want to put it into production. Great, great. That's good. Good. I've got um, um, schools already calling me and asking me how to, um, to do this. So this is good. So we'll, um, we'll set up a, a, a meeting. I, I would like to be part of that as um, scheduling of that occurs with the different schools. If I could be a participant um, or CC'd on that as well, invited to that meeting so I can stay up on top of it as well. Yeah, we'll do it very soon and we'll record it. So if anyone who can't make that meeting can just watch the recording at their convenience. Great, Jason. Great. Does any board members have any questions for Jason in reference to this? Vinny does. Vinny. Uh, morning. Vinny, good morning. It's basically a share file or like a Zix. And, and then how soon should we uh, submit these? Because we're ready to present ours electronically, so. Yeah, no, it's, it's not a share file. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's an online application where you fill in information and upload documents um, and it goes into our system. Um, you said but, it's uh, ready relatively soon? It's, it's ready as soon as we want to, uh, you know, set up the, the training. <laughs> um, you know, I could do something, uh, you know, I'll, I'll coordinate with, with Chuck and, and Karen today and we'll, we'll get that scheduled and, and get it out to everybody. Okay. Sooner the better. Yeah, yeah, because I know people yeah. are ready. Yeah, we've got to move Thank this you, Jason. No problem. Thanks, Jason, for coming on. Cynthia's got her hand up. Cynthia, uh, please. Yes, yeah, sorry. It, I don't have a question for, for Jay. I was just um, wondering if we could let Paul Grabowski introduce himself. Um, before we sign off, he just joined um, our Opro unit uh, two or three weeks ago, I believe, Paul. So if you could just, you know, take a minute to introduce himself to you guys, that'd be great. You know, thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate that. Paul, um, I met you last week in the MO meeting, MOU meeting with the commissioner and the staff. Uh, welcome today. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming to our meeting as well. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what your new... Um, job will be with the department, please. Nice to meet everybody. Um, my name is Paul Grabowski. I'm a staff attorney too with the department. Started about a month ago and I'll be working on occupational enforcement issues. Um, I'll have a lot of the other boards. So I've got heating and cooling, electric, glass, elevators, um, fire, sprinklers. So you'll be uh, seeing me around every once in a while and uh, happy to be on board. I've got a lot of administrative law history with Medicare and Medicaid. That's my background. and. Um, Looking forward to this new role. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, questions for Paul? Okay. All right. I think we can close this meeting. Um, again, we're going to um, um, take a 15, 20 minute break. Um, we're going to be switching over to, we're coming off of Zoom and we're going on to. Um, Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay, so uh, 